Hi painting, welcome to another week with Mrs. Williams. Here we go. Um, please don't lose hope in the rainbow wall. I think we've noticed that Mrs. Williams gets a little distracted or a little busy. Um, and eventually we will change this out. It'll be new and awesome, but for now, just hold on to what we have. This week we will. I want you to sketch every single day just like we've been doing. I want you to do an artist spotlight on Friday just like we've been doing. And we're also going to continue to master some art skills for about 10 to 25 minutes or more with a color wheel and a color chart. Alright, here's a reminder on how to do sketches if you're new here. And here's a reminder how to do an artist spotlight in case you've forgotten. Try to turn those in every Friday before 3.30. I can see who's turning in things late. And if you start to do it on a weekly basis, eventually that just becomes a really nasty habit. If we look at it um, like in-person and online students, if my in-person students kept turning everything in late around 4.30 to 5.30 to 9.30 to 11.30 at night, I would not accept it. I wouldn't even be in the building. So it's really unfair when you try to turn in things way, way after they're due. If you have a problem or you think you're going to be late, please email me. All right, this week we're going to continue mastering the color wheel and the color chart. For this week, you're going to need a wooden pencil. You're going to need a circle stencil. Usually, if I don't have a perfect stencil, I'll just use what's around me. So I have like a cup on my desk, the bottom of an iPad stand. Um, just feel free to be creative. You are going to need a straight edge. Usually, that's just a ruler or a piece of thicker paper just folded in on itself until you have a ruler straight side to it that you can draw on. You're going to need a watercolor palette, some brushes, and a paper towel. This week, you're going to set up your paper exactly like this. On one side, it's going to have the color wheel, and on one side, it's going to have a color chart. The color chart has eight rows and eight columns. Now, I'm going to include a handout on how to do the color wheel in Google Classroom, but I am assuming since we are an advanced level class, most of you have seen a color wheel, so I don't want to pay too much attention to it. Most of this video is going to go towards the color chart over here. The color wheel, I do want you to only do it with red, yellow, and blue watercolor. So even if his face is orange, green, or purple, I want you to be mixing watercolors and so you know how to make those colors in case one day you do run out of orange, green, or purple. We want to be prepared for that. All right, for your color chart, this is a setup. So you have a chart broken into eight rows and eight columns, and every row is going to be labeled with a color. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, or purple, brown, and black. And then it's going to be the same going downwards as well. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. You're going to start filling in your rows and your columns with the color they're labeled. So if this is the red column, we're going to fill all of this red. And if this is the red row, we're going to do all of it red over here. A very pro tip, something I would recommend highly, is having a hair dryer so you can dry each row and column right after they're painted before you paint another row or another column. Because if you do, the colors will bleed together and it'll look like a really gross, melted, skittle, rainbow puddle. And we don't want that. We want clear, defined rows and columns. So if you keep following orange here, orange there, yellow here, yellow there, so on and so forth, you should end up with something like this. We're doing this to see how colors mix together um, and how masterful we can be at getting those layers perfect. And so you can see some colors in the future if we're looking for a shade of green but we don't want like it to be too green. We want maybe more like Shrek green. Then ironically, we can look at this and we can realize the colors to mix for Shrek. I would actually go between green and add a little bit of orange or green or add a little bit of yellow. Same thing, let's say we were doing a picture of our dog and rather than brown, 
brown, we would want to look at maybe brown orange, brown red, or even brown purple to add some really cool shades and tones and tints to our wonderful painting. So anyway, guys, we have a lot to do this week. I definitely don't want to take up more of your time, but good luck. I know you can do this.